Hello everyone and welcome to this video on the Python programming language. So in this video I will attempt to code a very simple moving average trading strategy. So before we begin, if you like the videos on this channel, then be sure to click that subscribe and like button and to be notified about new videos from this channel, hit that bell notification. Also the material in this video is purely educational and should not be taken as professional investment advice as I am not a financial advisor so please 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 do your own research before making any sort of investment and let's go ahead and begin. So I'm currently on Google's website called colab.research.google.com and I'm on it because it makes it easy to start programming in Python. All you have to do is go to this website and then log in using your Google account and get started writing your Python code. So if you're following along with me, go ahead and click on file, then click on new notebook and a new tab open up for you and then eventually a new cell for you to start writing your code. And in this cell, I'm gonna put in some comments. I'm gonna put in a description about the program. So I'm just gonna type a simple, and I'm gonna make that a lowercase s, a simple moving average trading strategy all right and I put using Python all right so let's go ahead and create a new cell by clicking this code button here in the top left and in this cell I'm going to import the libraries that I'm going to be using throughout the program so I'm going to import pandas as pd I'm going to import numpy as mp and I'm going to import matplotlib dot pi plot as plt and then I'm going to give my plot a style so I'm just going to type plt dot style dot use and I'm going to use the 538 style all right I like that style so let's go ahead and run this cell by clicking this button here to the left and this will let me know if I made any mistakes and it looks like I'm good so let's go ahead and create a new cell and now I plan on loading the data so I'm going to load some stock data and to do that I need to use Google's library so from google.colab I'm going to import files and I'm just going to type files.upload to upload the file so I'm going to go ahead and run this cell click on choose files and I'm going to upload this apple.csv file alright so I can see that the file has been uploaded let's create a new cell and now it's time to store the data and do that I'm going to create a variable called df which will be short for data frame and I'm going to set it equal to pd.read underscore csv and then I'm going to input the name of the file which is aapl.csv or apple.csv and then I want to show the data so in order to do that I'm just going to type df here and let's run it okay so now we can see that this data set contains the date the open price the high price the, the low price the close price the adjusted close price and the volume and I want the date to be the indices so to do that I just need to set the date as the index so here let's set the date as the index and to do that just set df equal to df.set underscore index and then put in pd dot date time index and let me just uh, escape out of that all right so uh, pd dot date time index and then put Put, uh, let me escape out of that again. All right, so put df and then date dot values. All right, so let's run this again. And now we can see the dates are the indices. Okay, so that looks good. Let's create a new cell and I always like to visualize the, the price. So we're gonna visualize the close price. And to do that, I'm going to create a plot. So just type plt, plt dot figure, and I'm going to give my figure a figure size. I'm going to set the figure size equal to 16 by 8, and then I'm going to give my plot a title. So I'm going to type plt dot title. I'm just going to call this close price, and then I want to give the plot some data. So I'm going to type plt dot plot. And I'm going to tell it what to plot. So I want to plot the close price, right? And I can plot really any of these prices here. And then I'm going to give the x axis a label. So I'm just going to type filter dot x label and put the date. And then I'm going to give my y axis a label. So I'm going to type filter dot y label and I'm going to call it, uh, or I'm going to give it the label close price in USD and then I want to show the plot, so I'm just going to type plt.show, and let's run this. Okay, and there we go. So now we can see our chart here. 
a visualization of the close price for our data set. And I guess I should have mentioned before that this data set is information on Apple, on the company Apple. So that's what we're looking at here visually. And of course, that's again the data set here that we saw earlier. And we can see the number of rows that it contains, which is 174 rows and seven columns that I named off earlier. Okay, so sorry if I didn't mention that before, just to make it more clear and obvious that this is the this is a data set on Apple's stock price. Okay, and actually let's go ahead and just change this title here to be Apple close price. All right, so let's run this again, and I think that makes it a little bit uh, more obvious. All right, so let's go ahead and create a new cell and now in this cell I'm going to create a function to calculate the simple moving average that we're going to need for our strategy so let's go ahead and do that I'm going to call this function SMA and it's going to take in our data set and it's going to take in some period of time so I'm going to set period equal to 30 I'm going to default it to be 30 for now and it's going to take in some column and I'm going to default that column to be the close price column from our data set okay and then it's going to return data at that column dot rolling with a window equal to the period and then I want the mean right I want the average so let's go ahead and run this and it looks good I'm going to create a new cell and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new column to store this this SMA the 30 day simple moving average so let's go ahead and do that so I'm going to call this column SMA 30 and I'm going to set it equal to our function and our function is going to take in the data set and then uh, we can also take in the time period but right now everything else is defaulted so it's just going to take in the data set here and let's run that all right so that looks good I'm going to create a new cell and now I want to show the data so I'm just going to type df here let's run this okay and now we can see this new column called SMA30 and we can see some values here all right so that's good let's create a new cell and now let's actually create the strategy so the strategy is it's going to be very very simple right so I'm going to buy the asset when the simple moving average the 30 day simple moving average goes below the close price and then I'm going to sell when the 30 day simple moving average goes above the close price and then I'm never going to sell at a price lower than I bought. All right, so pretty simple strategy. So let's go ahead and create a function for that. I'm going to call it strategy. And it's going to take in some data set. And then I need to create a few variables to store the data. So I'm going to create a variable called buy. I'm going to set it equal to an empty list. So this is going to be our empty buy list. I want to create a variable called sell and set it equal to an empty list. So this will be our empty sell list for now. But we're going to populate it with all the data that we need. And then I'm going to create a variable called flag. And I'm going to set it equal to zero for now. And this flag will indicate if we last bought or sold the asset. All right. And then I'm going to create another variable called buy price and this will be a placeholder for the last price that we bought at so I'm going to set this or default it to zero all right okay so now I'm going to create a loop to go through the data so for I in range zero to the length of our data set I want to create some if statements so if the 30 day moving average simple moving average at position I is greater than the close price at position I and the flag is equal to zero so the flag is indicating that it's okay to buy then I'm going to buy the asset and and I will append this to my buy list so so I'm going to put buy dot append and I'm going to append the close price at position I. All right. And then I'm going to append to my cell list a NAN value. So I'm just going to put cell dot append and then NP dot NAN. Okay. All right. And then I want to get the current price 
that I'm going to buy at. And this is to compare it later, of course, to see if it's okay to sell um, our our asset at a specific price, right? Because we never want to sell at a price that's lower than what we bought. So I'm going to set buy price equal to DF close at position I. And then I'm going to set the flag to one to indicate that we bought. So flag is going to be equal to one. All right. Else if and I'm just going to come up here, I'm going to kind of highlight all this and copy it use control C then come here and paste it use control V so else if the simple moving 30-day average is less than the current close price and the flag and I put equals here is actually it needs to be equals equals we're doing a comparison and we're not setting a value so my apologies for that uh, and the flag equals equals one which is basically an indication telling us that it's okay to sell and the last buy price is less than this price that we're trying to sell at, the close price that we're trying to sell at, at position I, then now it's okay to sell. So what we're going to do is we're going to append to the sell list the close price, all right, at position I. So that's the current close price. And then we're going to append NAND values for the for the buy list. So just type buy dot append np dot net. Alright, and then we need to reset that buy price because we sold our asset so we don't have anything, right? So the buy price will be reset to zero and then we need to reset that flag to zero to indicate a sell. So flag is equal to zero. All right. Else the simple moving average of uh, the simple moving 30 day average and the close price are the same. So we're going to append then values to both our sell and our buy list. All right. So just type sell dot append np dot nan and buy dot append np dot nan. Okay, so that's pretty much the strategy in a nutshell. Hopefully, I did everything like I was supposed to. So next, we're going to return the buy and sell list. So let's go ahead and run this. And let's create a new cell. And now in this cell, we're going to get the buy and sell list. So just type, and I put here, get the buy and sell list. All right, so I'm going to create two new columns. One will be called buy, and I'm going to set this equal to our strategy with our input df at position zero. And then I'm going to create a column called sell. And I'm going to set this equal to our strategy with our data set input at position one. And actually, a better thing to do would be to create a, uh, a variable. I'm going to call this variable strat. I'm going to set this equal to to this here to our function and then I'm just going to uh, uh, return strat at position 0 and strat at position 1 instead of doing the same work twice again. Alright, so same thing. So let's go ahead and just run this. Well, almost the same thing. This should uh, speed up a little bit. So let's run that and let's create a new cell. And now we have our buy list. We have our sell list uh, from our strategy. So let's go ahead and visualize this buy and sell strategy. So we're going to visualize the close price history with the buy and sell signals. So let's visualize the data and the the buy and sell signals and I'll say visualize the close price and the buy and sell signals so I'm just gonna go back up here where we had our previous chart and I'm going to highlight all of this and I'm gonna copy using control C then come back down here and I'm going to paste it using control V to make it a little bit faster I'm just gonna change the title here 
uh, from Apple close price to Apple close price. I'm gonna put with buy and sell signals. Okay, and then I'm just going to plot um, the buy and sell signal data. All right, so let's also plot the moving average. So I'm gonna type plt dot plot df sma 30. So that's the simple moving. 30 day average or the 30 day simple moving average and I'm going to give this an alpha equal to 0 0.5 and I'm going to give it a label so the label will be SMA 30 and I will do something similar for the close price let's give it an give it an alpha equal to 0 0.5 and a label equal to close alright so that looks good. Let's go ahead and use a scatter plot. So type plt.scatter to, to show the buy and sell signal. So I'm going to put in the dates, df.index, right? That contains our dates. And then I'm going to put in the buy signal first. And I'm going to give the buy signal a color. So I'm going to set the color equal to green for like go or, you know, go ahead and buy. And then I'm going to set the label to be buy signal. Okay, and then I'm going to give it a marker so it can stand out a little bit. And it's going to be this upper character. And then I'm going to give it an alpha as well. And I'm going to set the alpha equal to 1. And then the cell signal will be very similar. So I'm just going to highlight that line. And I'm going to copy using control C. And then I'm going to come down here and paste it using control V. And then just change a few things. So I'm going to change this to be the sell signal. Instead of green, it's going to be red for like stop, hold up. You know, uh, let's go ahead and, and sell this asset. I'm going to change the label to be sell signal. And then the marker will be downward. So it's just going to be a V here. It's going to be a little down character. And then I'm going to keep the alpha equal to 1. And I think that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and run this. And here we go. So now we have our simple chart with the close price of Apple and the strategies buy and sell signals. All right, so we can see that the strategy tells us to buy here and it tells us to sell here. So we would have been uh, or we would have profited here a little bit and then it tells us to buy here and sell here. Again, we would have profited. It tells us to buy here and sell here. Again, we would have profited only slightly. And then here and here we would have profited um, buy here, sell here, we would have profited, and then buy here and sell here, we would have profited. And right now, uh, it tells us to buy, but as you can see, the close price is lower than what we bought at, so there is no signal to tell us to sell, right? So that's pretty cool. Um, it looks like the strategy would have been profitable. However, a buy and hold strategy might have been more profitable. And I say might have only because I haven't ran the actual numbers yet. All right. Well, that's the end of the video. To start an investment portfolio of your own, you can click on the link below in the description and get two free stocks valued up to $1,850 on Webull when you deposit $100 or more. And don't forget to grab $10 worth of Bitcoin using the BlockFi link below when you deposit $100 or more. It's basically free money. Thanks for watching and thank you to the supporters supporting this channel on Patreon.com. I truly, truly appreciate it. And if you would like to be a supporter on Patreon.com, I will leave a link in the description below for that. If you want to just support the channel or get the code and data set in this video. Again, thanks for watching and I hope you all have a wonderful, fantastic day. See you in the next video.